door, critical tissue coming through. When I saw the EKG, I knew right away that this was an absolute cardiac medical emergency. She needed immediate care and attention. I had kidney stone attack. Never had them in my life. Didn't know what it was. Thought it was appendicitis. Got a free ride to the hospital in an ambulance. They were going to remove the stones. Couldn't. So they did a stent on me. And to come back later on and have the stent removed and the stones. And after, when I went back in to have that done, I was in pain. I'd had chest pains the night before, thinking it was the stones because they had told me that, you know, I'd feel pain all over. So I sat up in the chair because it's the only place I could get any relief. When I went down, the pain was unbelievable. Mrs. Knees came in for her outpatient procedure and I was just admitting her routinely as we do with all our other patients. One of our assessment questions is, are you having any pain? And usually people, you know, they may have some aches and pains, but we're definitely keyed in if somebody says, I'm having a little bit of discomfort in my chest. Typically patients have some discomfort, but not the degree of discomfort that she was in. So when I read the EKG, it showed ST segment elevation, which is one of the early signs of ischemic heart disease. I needed to immediately call the cardiologist. So I made a call, it was Dr. Silverman, who I've worked with for many decades, and uh, he wanted me to send the EKG to him immediately. He called me back within a couple of minutes. He said, I'm coming down to see the patient now. And when he came in, it was Dr. Silverman, and he had my results in his hand, and he said, uh, this is not a game, this is the real McCoy. He said, you're having a full-blown heart attack. You hold the door, critical patient coming through. We got her to the emergency room and the nurses were there and waiting because I had called ahead of time. They immediately started all of the life-saving medications that would prep this patient for her procedure that she was about to have. He was incredible. I mean, I, I was petrified, I'll be honest with you. And I'm, I'm a tough buzzard, I, but I was scared to death. And um, he w I was so busy engrossed in listening to him and watching everybody do their job. I mean, it was like clockwork. It was, in, it was unbelievable. We stabilized her in the emergency room. Uh, prior to all that, we had called the interventional cardiologist who was on his way in. And from the emergency room, we then came over to the catheterization lab, and the interventional cardiologist was pretty much walking in the door at that point. He then took over the care of the patient and then proceeded to uh, perform her life-saving procedure. We were able to get her in here, get her on the table, get the arteries opened, and she had a very good outcome. Everybody, I was clean for a day. I mean, everybody was right there, took care of me. Everybody was wonderful. I can't say enough good things about the staff. Sometime three or four months after her procedure, we scheduled another echocardiogram to see if there had been any healing of her heart muscle. And fortunately, her heart strength had returned to normal uh, as a result of the procedure. He checked me all over, uh, read my results, tests that they had done, and jumped up and down when he saw my counts on everything because he said, that's good medicine and good care. I don't care what anybody says. And he slammed the papers down on the table. <laughs> He's pretty proud of himself too, which he should be.